Jeff Durkin here with We Are Change Connecticut. We're out here in Maryland reporting for the Bradley Manning Rally at Fort Meade, and we're joined by CIA whistleblower Susan Lindauer. Bradley Manning was uh, accused of leaking information to, from, from the military standpoint, Bradley Manning was accused of leaking classified information to the public regarding U.S. war crimes in Iraq. Now, this is very significant. He has been accused of aiding and abetting the enemy by revealing the truth to the global community. However, it could be said that Bradley Manning, uh, Bradley Manning's, uh, the, the, the actions of the U.S. military were already known to the Iraqi people. The Iraqi people were living through this. They were suffering through this every day through the occupation. They did not need Bradley Manning to tell them anything. He was not disclosing anything that they didn't know from personal experience. A five-year-old in Iraq knew what a U.S soldiers were doing. Um, what Bradley Manning did was he exposed this to the world so that we, the people of, of the United States, would be essentially shamed by the actions of the U.S. military. That is why he's really being punished, because he didn't cover up the lies and the crimes. He didn't hide it from the people. He, he made sure that the world community could see it for themselves with their own eyes. And that's why they're attacking him, to punish him. Abu Ghraib, as you know, was a place where torture occurred regularly. And a, a soldier from West Virginia, a private named Lindy England, got three years in prison for degrading, humiliating, uh, Ir Iraqi prisoners of war at Abu Ghraib, uh, dis and her, and her actions when when the when the public saw, when the global community saw her actions and the the, the 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 smearing them with feces, having naked men crawl on top of each other, being forced to simulate sodomy, in some cases being sodomized by American soldiers, um, she received three years in prison. Three years for torture and for gross human rights abuses. Bradley Manning has already served four years in prison and he is being threatened with a 20-year sentence or even life imprisonment because he, uh, Lindy England, is perceived as a victim by the U.S. military. Think of this. Lindy England, who committed torture at Abu Ghraib, is a victim of exposure, whereas Bradley Manning is a perpetrator of exposure. Lindy England enjoyed committing the crimes. She's seen, you know, w waving her fingers like this in, in V's, and, and, and Bradley Manning uh, uh, saw a moral obligation to expose war crimes by U.S. soldiers. That's a, a fundamental difference here. That, that, that the American military is not ashamed to commit the crimes. It's, it's angry at whoever will expose them. You were mentioning earlier about the um, Nuremberg Principle and relate to Bradley Manning. Maybe for those who don't know what that is, could you maybe explain that and how it relates to Bradley Manning in his case? Bradley Manning has a very strong defense. The Nuremberg principles that go back to Nazi Germany and the trials of the head of the SS uh, and the head of Hitler's armies in, after, the, after World War II, uh, those were called the Nuremberg trials. The Nuremberg principles, the, the Nazi soldiers set, tried to, to claim that they were following orders when they, when they tortured, when they murdered, when they indiscriminately slaughtered civilians rounded up people for Auschwitz and all that, uh, that they were following orders and therefore they should be exempt from responsibility. The Nuremberg Principle said that no, if you are an ordinary soldier, the lowest person in the, in the, in the military ranks, you are obligated to refuse to commit war crimes. You are responsible for your actions. In a, in, and and if, a, if an order is given by a ranking officer to break, the law, to break international law to commit war crimes, then you are obligated to oppose it. You are obligated to report it to your higher ranking officers. And if your, super, your superior ranking officers are not responsive when you report the war crimes, you are obligated to tell the public. And this is, this is a, 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 a matter of international law. And it's called the Nuremberg Principle. And Bradley Manning is absolutely within his bounds to use that in his defense. Because under international law, he is not, he, he would face prosecution 
himself if he refused, if he failed to, to either oppose these war crimes or expose them. He would face prosecution, just like the Nazis did. And a lot of Americans are like, yeah, how dare you compare us to the Nazis? These are principles that apply to all situations and all peoples. They are moral principles of law, humanitarian principles, and they are safeguarding our community, our, our world community, from crimes in, committed in war. And even with the Bradley Manning case as well, we've seen a trend of the war on whistleblowers, including your case and so many others, uh, where the Obama administration used the Espionage Act the most times out of any administration ever. And it really shows how much of it they're abusing that. Um, maybe you could explain that to anybody, what how much of a breach uh, uh, that really is, the Espionage Act, and how, how it's been abused in a way. The Espionage Act, as you can imagine, was, a was created... Uh, to stop foreign spies or f Americans from spying for foreign governments. That's what it's supposed to be for. If I, I was, a C I was a CIA asset. If I had started spying for the Iraqis or for Egypt or for Russia or anyone else, that would be a gross violation of trust that would mean uh th that would that that is that is something that I, that i would absolutely support massive prosecution for um it, it is offensive to me to be told that exposing war crimes qualifies or exposing um that as a whistleblower that if i try to protect the community of our the united states see no, sorry, 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 sorry. Take that out. Take that out. Take that out. Take that out. I want to say something. I'm sorry. Okay. In, in okay, as a whistleblower, I believe that protection of national security means requires me to protect the values of this country. Do you understand the values of the Constitution? That is the preeminent oath that we swear to protect the Constitution from enemies, foreign and domestic. When I have a member of Congress telling me that it's okay to subvert the rights of the American people, because he winks and says so, that senator becomes an enemy of the United States, in my opinion. At least he's a buffoon, he is mediocre, he is failing in his own leadership responsibilities, but I consider that I have an obligation under no circumstances to allow his bad actions to drag me down with him. It is only because a few people will stand up and put, the, put their foot down and say, we are not going to let you do this, that we stop these things from happening. You know, they, uh, Thomas Drake exposing heavy surveillance of the, on the American people. Well, they shouldn't have been doing it in the first place. That is a gross violation of our rights. Bradley Manning exposing war crimes in Iraq forced the U.S. military to abandon certain practices. That in itself was profoundly valuable to the war effort. Because when, when Bradley Manning forced them to stop doing these things, that helped to calm down a very tense situation. The problem is, is that uh, whistleblowers are now, are be, are whistleblowing is now criminalized especially if it threatens entrenched powers. Uh, the Patriot Act says that any free speech is, any dissent is sedition if it disrupts the, the, the flow of government. Well, what is the flow of government but the, but the calm, the, the comforts of the, of the powers that be? Those who are in control, those who are dominating the government. And so, we, if, you have, if you declare that anything sedition uh, anything is seditious which which might cause a, a politician to lose the next election. You see, maybe that politician needs to face accountability to the people and needs to take responsibility for their actions and maybe it's a good idea for Americans to know what these politicians are doing in our names. And the only people who really want to protect the politicians are those who are afraid of the truth. But if you, if you, you know, are those who are those who are those who do who who are, are fighting to protect the vested interests. But those vested interests, just because they're in power, does not mean they're doing a good job. And we couldn't do we. I think we can do a lot better than what we've got right now in Washington. Just to wrap it up here, uh, for anybody out there who. Um want to support Bradley Manning and do any activism, anything like that, what would you recommend, any advice for people out there to start spreading the message about more people knowing, uh, you know, knowing more about his case? 
Bradley Manning is the, the coverage, the, the the national coverage of Bradley Manning's case has been appalling. I am very offended by these journalists, national journalists, who are running around saying that the Obama administration is starting a war on journalism. Uh, that 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 they're that because because he wiretapped the AP. <laughs> I think that's so funny uh, that they're complaining about this. That the the the, the these same press reporters have have absolutely refused to cover stories like Bradley Manning's or mine. They 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 have a news blackout out on anything the White House tells them or cover requires exposure of, of special national security interests, um, and yet they want to pretend to be us for a day. Be, being us for a day means going to jail. I was held on, on Carswell Air Force Base for a year with no trial, no hearing, secret charges, secret evidence, secret grand jury testimony. I was, uh, I had a public defender who did not care about my case at all. I had a, a, an uncle who is an attorney who tried to visit me three times. Three times, uh, the first two times, the military refused to allow him access to the base to meet me. And we were, he was, at this, by this time, he was on my case. He was on my, recognized by the court as being part of my defense team. And so I was being denied access to an attorney, uh, according to the NDAA rule, the new NDAA rules. I was sort, my case was sort of a practice run for what is now the NDAA. And Americans are very stupid and foolish if you think that it only applies to me and Bradley Manning or me and Thomas Drake, or John Kirkow. You know, no, no. They, we are the first step. When I was in trial, oh, excuse me, I was never at trial. When I was in court, the prosecutor used to say, Your Honor, this is a special situation. This will never happen again. Please, we just got to do it once. Within two years of, my, of the end of my indictment, they were doing it to everybody. And now, and, and, let me, and let me tell you, America, you're next. If you're an activist, if you're a blogger, if you're a radio host, you are going to be tar targeted for special treatment by the U.S. government. And the NDAA and being locked on a military base is no joke. When you are denied, I, I personally have been denied the right to see an attorney. Huh. And it, it, it literally, in my case, my uncle, who was an attorney, family member and attorney, um, it took U.S. Marshals standing by, flanking him at the base, with a judge waiting in his courtroom to issue the, the order to go in before the military finally let this meeting occur. And it was not a matter of, the Constitution was, my constitutional rights were suspended on that base. I had no constitutional rights. Everything was gone. I was not allowed to face my accusers. I was not allowed to know what I was accused of doing. They were not allowed to, they were not required to show any evidence that a crime had actually occurred. They made big statements in the media, uh, in my indictment, uh, that I was an Iraqi agent. Please. What that meant was that I had opposed George Bush. And I told him that there would be no weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. And I war gave advance warning about the 9-11 attacks. Um, and, we, and I showed that there was an Iraqi peace option that would have uh, solved the entire problem. But because we had been so proactive and done a pretty outstanding job, and because it contradicted the Bush administration policy, they were allowed to do all sorts. They, they took every measure that they could do every measure that was necessary to protect the government in power so that it could be re-elected re while avoiding a candid discussion with the people over their policies. Whatever it took, they were going to do. And that's what's happening now. And, and I, I grieve for Bradley Manning. I really do. Uh, I, 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 I categorically deny that he was, I, I'm offended I am offended that, that he w is accused of aiding and abetting the enemy because the American people are not the enemy. The Iraqis already knew what was happening. They knew everything that was going on. They're living through the nightmare. We, the people of the United States, were the ones in ignorance. And we, the people of the United States, should never be considered the enemy of the United States government. Something's gone really wrong if that's now the case.
I was removed. I was definitely in the way. Uh, I was very outspoken against the war, and I was subsequently arrested on the Patriot Act and locked up in prison on Carswell Air Force Base while the government rewrote the history books. I, I was charged under the Espionage Act. I was turned into an enemy of the state. That was bad enough. At least I still had access to the court of law, to a due process. I had rights. And as much as the government didn't like that,